Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. Those three, three days looking for him were the hardest days of our lives. Tom Beerson was a college student away from home for just a month before being murdered. Tonight, a story Valley News Live was the first to bring you on air and online. Tom Beerson's family speaking out for the first time about their son's mysterious death. Police found the body of the North Dakota State University student three days after he went missing last fall, but they have not found his killer. Liz Collin met the Beersons and talks with police about the missing clues that could crack this case. He was a happy kid. He absolutely was. A charmer from day one. He'd get lost in those blue eyes. First, for his good looks. He got away with things with those blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and then for his words. He was a smooth talker. Tom Beerson spent his life just a few miles from St. Cloud in Sartell. A certain sport would always occupy much of his time. Didn't matter what the weather was like, he would be out there. One. As a skilled ball handler, Tom helped lead the Sabres to their very first state tournament as a junior. He scored 1,000 career points before graduating this past spring. But Tom was ready to leave the sport he loved behind. Starting at North Dakota State University's nursing program in Fargo this past fall. It's a time for a freshman college student to kind of learn a lot of things about themselves. Tom's parents knew he'd been drinking at school. He came home one last weekend pledging to do better. It was a really a wonderful weekend that we had with him. Obviously, we didn't know it was going to happen five days later. The following Saturday morning, Tom wasn't answering his parents' text messages. I became alarmed early on. It, it, something wasn't right. Calls to campus, friends, and Tom's roommate got them nowhere. They climbed into their car for the three-hour drive to Fargo with a fear impossible to imagine. Those three, three days looking for him were the hardest days of our lives. Police began piecing together where Tom was last seen. The longer that he was reported missing and there was no specific information, the more serious this became. Investigators now know Tom left his dorm room around 10 that Friday night. People last saw him walk away alone from a house party just six blocks from there at 3.30 in the morning. Three days after Tom went missing and six miles from that house party, a police officer found his body. His wallet was still on him. This is as tragic as it gets. He was lying on the grass inside a short fence surrounding an RV dealer in Moorhead. It was two things that Tom didn't have with him that months later police still believe may provide the biggest lead of all. The reason why we immediately identified those two items is because we expected to find them. One of Tom's size nine and a half Nikes and his silver colored iPhone 5 are still missing. A medical examiner has only said his death is a homicide. How he died won't be released until testing is complete. I've been asked if this is a cold case now that it's four months along and is far from that. Police still don't have a motive, but they've designated a team of investigators to the case, conducting hundreds of interviews so far. Still staying in touch with Tom's family in Sartell, hoping to make the call with answers to them soon. The sooner the better. It's a lot easier if you picture that, like, where he is now is better and, like, no one's going to hurt him there. The days are still hard for Tom's family. His sister, two years older, in college herself. I like to remember the funny stuff and, like, the good times. But they have all been humbled by the support they've been given. Just two weeks ago, on Tom's 19th birthday, friends lined their driveway and Tom's basketball hoop with luminaries. I was just... So heartwarming to us to look outside and see that. Now, Greg and Debbie want all college students to learn from what happened to Tom, that safety should always be taken seriously. We miss him so much. Robbed of the chance to see the man their son would have grown to be. Reminded of the message all parents should hear. Hug your kids. Just hug your kids. Because you never know if you don't get to do it again. Tom's family told Liz that they will soon honor his life with a memorial in Sartell. The Ramsey County Medical Examiner's Office is handling the medical tests in this case, and the office says it will be up to police to decide what information to release once they're finished. Toxicology tests can take up to six months.
Normally, snowfall this time of year would be adding insult to injury. Today's snow seemed almost like a treat. Should we expect more tonight? Well, Hutch is here with the answer. Mr. Johnson? Mike, we do have a few flakes continuing to make their way out of central North Dakota and toward the valley. So for westbound travelers this evening, a few flakes will continue to fly. Uh, storm system causing some slippery conditions out toward the Twin Cities as well, where there is a winter storm warning in effect south of I-94, but everywhere from St. Cloud toward the Twin Cities, you could see some slippery conditions. Just moving over the I-94 corridor out in Stutzman County and Barnes County, a band of some moderate snowfall out there. Here's a look at the latest I-94 uh, camera from the Department of Transportation. Uh, not reducing visibility is too bad yet, but it is on the way. Spotty flurries this evening. Temperatures pretty much steady in the teens as we go through the evening. It looks like we get some cold before we warm back up. And then I'll tell you about a weekend chance of significant snow potential here in just a few minutes, Mike. All right, we'll be waiting for that. Thanks, Hutch. There is a missing persons case in the Northern Valley that seems eerily similar to that of Andrew Sadik. He was the Wapaton College student who was caught up in a drug investigation and whose body was found in the Red River. Now police are asking for your help locating this woman, Jenna Stay, an 18-year-old who has been missing since last week. Investigators say that she doesn't have her cell phone with her. Stay faces two felony counts of selling drugs in Polk County. She didn't show up for her court appearance in Crookston this week, and a warrant's been issued for her arrest. Are you concerned she's a danger to herself or in danger from other drug dealers? Well, I think, <clears throat> you know, anytime somebody is involved in those types of situations, those are concerns. But for right now, we don't have any specific information that would indicate that, either that she's a danger to herself or that others uh, might be a danger to her. If you have any information regarding Jenna's whereabouts, contact police immediately. The Highway Patrol says an elderly couple died in a head-on crash in northwest Minnesota. It happened yesterday on Highway 9, just outside of Ada. The state patrol says a car driven by an 88-year-old man crossed the center line and hit an oncoming truck. The state patrol is identifying the driver as Carlton Road of Mentor, Minnesota. His wife, Hazel, was also killed. The driver of the truck, though, was not injured. A man who once ran for mayor in West Fargo is headed to prison on child pornography charges. Peter Carl is his name. He was sentenced to six years for receiving materials involving the sexual exploitation of minors. Carl ran for mayor in 2010. He was also convicted on child porn charges in New York back in 2003. There he was placed on probation. In North Dakota, lawmakers want harsher punishments for those who share explicit pictures of a person that did not give consent. Now, the bill addresses revenge porn is what it's called. It's commonly naked pictures shared by a person on digital media, then distributed by an ex-partner with the intention to shame or embarrass the person pictured. Valley News team's Ashley Bishop has more on the punishment and whether some say it's about government oversight. Receiving explicit pictures on your phone is not new. But if you distribute a picture that was not intended to be shared, you could soon face consequences. And the bill provides not just for a criminal penalty. It would be a Class A misdemeanor to distribute intimate images. But it also provides for a private right of action, a civil remedy. So an individual who is a victim of this kind of behavior, uh, they can sue the individual in state district court. Snyder says a misdemeanor charge could have people facing jail time. Currently, there is no punishment for revenge porn. Fargo police say it is very difficult to bring criminal charges against a person that you willingly shared those pictures with. If you receive a picture, you would not be breaking the law. Only if you forward that picture on would get you in trouble. In a way, if it's only meant to be between the two people and there are other parties involved and one person is sending them out without the consent of the other, I think that person should, honest to God, face charges because that was meant as something between two people. But not everyone sees Zach's side. Arissa Ramos says don't do it if you don't want it out there. But I don't think there should be any punishment in my opinion because she sent it in the first place or he sent it in the first place. They sent it it's because they wanted the attention to be looked at or something so now they're getting the attention. If passed the revenge porn law would cover video as well as pictures. In Fargo, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. 
The bill has support from both Republicans and Democrats, and Senator Schneider says if passed, North Dakota would join other states that have passed similar laws. If you want to read the entire bill for yourself, you sure can. Click on this story on valleynewslive.com. And if you need help uncovering fraud or corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline, 701-237-6576, and leave your tip. Those ginkgo, ginseng, and garlic supplements you've been taking may not actually contain what's on the label. At least that's what a report accuses store brand supplements of being at Target, Walgreen, Walmart, and GNC. Well, GNC is calling into question the science behind the report, however, saying it may not be appropriate. Others here in the Valley are skeptical, too. This has primarily been used uh, uh, to test the age of dinosaurs and lizards. And in fact, uh, the biologist that produced this report for the Attorney General in New York uh, that's what his specialty is, is on evolutionary uh, animals. Harris adds that Swanson may see a dip in the near future after the report, but he says they spend millions of dollars a year on quality control and verifying that you're actually getting what you pay for. Your long-awaited restaurant report card returns tonight, and this time we head to an establishment that may have a record-breaking amount of violations. Tune in tonight on Valley News Live 10 at 10, and we'll tell you who needs to clean up their act and who has earned themselves that coveted Clean Plate Award. Later on Valley News Live at 6, NDSU's basketball team goes on a short road trip and scores big with kids at Sanford's Children Hospital. And we have flakes flying tonight, especially for our western counties. It looks like the cold takes hold, and then another round of possibly substantial snow coming our way. Details are next.